Hello YouTube, welcome to another Sunday in the shop. It's Wednesday and I'm starting this because we don't know how long this is going to take. We're going to make a project out of this. See these nice boring tools? If I could take a look at that. Remember I showed you I make these homemade? Well, bear with me. This is Sunday so we don't have to be all professional and get on the phone back. Oh, I know y'all hate that. I do. You hear me grumble. And that, I'm assuming, is just to make a whole little beggar in wood. There's no sharp edge on it. That, this, you can put a very sharp edge, believe me. If you file that just right, those will be, like, nice sharp edges when you go. Listen, this goes in there with a the little indent for a set screw. See that? I had this all laid out once. And then, you, I'm assuming you put that. But it had to have some kind of threaded ferrule on there to make it look nice. Which is weird. Why do you even need it? If that's a screw that goes there in the hole, I'm holding the hold the flat thing in there. And this goes all the way through. I've, I'll show you what I plan on making when I may. This is all designed on the bill. We may change here in one second. You know what I mean, the cap comes off. Well, you can see all the way through there. That's going to take some boring to do what I want to do. Because that's barely 5 sixteenths. Well, I'll show you the problem with these. These things will explode after you walk. Let me get my poking tool. We, we've got to have something to point with. we got to have a pointer. See these snap rings? The wiring. If you look inside of these, and this is what I ground. Look, just past where it's ground brass, and you can start maybe seeing the little ring. This, I don't know if you'll see it in there. We may, we may be able to show you with a flashlight. No, it's down in there too far. Trust me, if you if you look, you can barely see see barely that little line back in there. Watch, is there, see you start seeing that little line. Well, those those snap in here, okay. Well, this is what I tried to do. Flew apart. I know that's what I did. I tried graining that a little bit, right? So I could slip it over. And get onto this snap. I can get. I can turn this around. I can snap it on that one. I cannot get this on. And I tried ways of. I can take it apart and show you. I tried ways of having it in the vise. Watch this. I never could get that to slap over there. It will not go over there. I tried like a piston ring with a probe and a. And I had enough of it. And it will, it will catch down here. If you turn it around, believe me. If you turn this around, it will catch and then it won't come off because I stuck it on there that way and I was yanking on the thing. So, my idea is to... Bear with me while we're getting all this camera crashing. I just got to where I don't want to use my tripod anymore. Because you, you can never get the tripod over here like this. I thought about chopping this down. Well, I want room for bits. And it's hollow all the way. You can probably fit half a dozen bits inside this hollow handle. We'll get it apart, trust me. And stick it in there so far and epoxy it. Make a multi-bit screwdriver, but I don't need one. I'm just showing you, you could do this if you come across the line. And that's magnetic, hold the bit. Here we go. So you try, try to start your battery symbol shows up. It don't. It shows up. It won't show up at the end of a video. Or it shows up right in the middle. See, that's hollow. It doesn't matter. So we don't know what we're gonna make. We don't need another back saw. Oh, we found it. This is in with the cartridge. You can make a ferrule out of that. 
I could make a new ferrule for this. I could have did it on the last saw tool I made. You haven't seen this video. You don't know what you're missing. And I flattened that again because the wood was flat. I thought I'd mention that this time. I made the pin short, but oh well. I, I just started. The wood's been squished anyway when they hammered a nail in there. So this is a nice little saw. If you can make one of anything the way I did, and like I said, you can travel through it. When you back saw, it's more efficient. We're going to pause and change the battery in here so it quits blinking up there in the corner. It distracts you when you're trying to work. It doesn't look like you're. Uh, your little bell thing, click, you got a message, somebody upload a video on, the little, on your page, it's like, oh, oh, there's a little red dot, better, better stop what I'm doing, it's just a distraction, well, let's stop, regroup, come back and decide, what are we going to do with all this mess today, yeah, it'll focus, I, I may have to change my background, well, I did get the ferrule to come off. I put the vice grips, tried to, I put the ferrule on this and then hit it with a hammer. And if you're going to beat, if you hit, hit the rivet. And I smacked that and knocked the vice grips off a couple times on the table. And then I put it and started wobbling it. So the only thing holding that was the shellac glue, whatever they had on. Let's see if we can clean this up. We really abused it. If not, we can make one. We already decided that. Let's, let's come back and see what this looks like when we're done cleaning it. I gotta show you this one. See the taper of my little hammer? See the ferrule? I had it up in the vise and I tried it to tap my hammer down so the head of this is clear because it'll go all the way through. Trust me, it's almost flush. See that? It's almost flush. So I head up on the vice where I, could I got my hammer tapped out. Then I come over here to the edge of the steel plate. It's always preach. I always, I always preach. You gotta have a steel plate to work with. Something beside it. And I'm taking this big hammer and trying to get that round. And even though this is a big hammer, don't don't swing it like a sledgehammer. Take advantage of it. Just use the weight and drop it. Like we was all making center punches and stuff a while back last year or whenever we had some discussions on it on different channels. I take a great big two and a half pound hammer. It, you've seen it if you've subbed me a long time. That bluish whatever big ball peen hammer. And I'll drop it on a center punch so to make the mark. I'm not swinging. I just pick it up and drop it. When your center punch you just bang like that on there. You don't swing and hit it hard. Because I have several kinds of punches. In fact, I just found what I was going to show today. And maybe I'll get it out later. I'll find it and show it later. It's just to mark the hole. You got a prick punch just to mark the hole on your lines when you're like what I was making with it. And then you center punch it. I found this later here and lost it. I probably looking in the tool drawer. Different punches do different things. But I did the same thing with this one. See that little raised edge? I laid this down on here. See where that's caved in? I laid it down. Set the punch in here like this. I know it's a sharp edge. You probably can make a better tool. You never can get what you want to look with the light. But you know what I mean. And then I had it in there on there, right? And felt it. And then I smacked this with the hammer. Like that. Well, that comes down and knocked it out a little bit. It's a usable. But we don't know what we're going to make. That's why we figured we'd do some of this scoop. Let, let, let's see if we think we can make a feral out of this. You know, this is off a lamp. If you bought a lamp for a dollar in a second-hand store, took it home and got it like this, a couple of pieces, and a little nuts, well, you just about throw the lamp away. I mean, you've got parts to make stuff with, but I know that's off a fancy old lampshade thing. It's got to be. Look at it. It has to be off a lamp. Stay tuned. 
Okay, before I take a break, we're going to do this little clip here. That does fit, so you can shorten that up as much as you want of that barrel. It's open on the end, but no one really notices that. You can epoxy that and paint with it. No one really notices that end like they do this part of the screwdriver. And that flare just is not my style. And you can't really grind it. It's full. By the time you grind it, it's the same diameter. You're not going to have that folded lip. You're just going to bare straight piece of metal. So but let's not ruin that. Let's save that for a different project. If we decide to use this for a ferrule, we only need like half of it. We could chop off right before the den or somewhere in there. I mean, it's hard to eyeball that stuff. Here, let me back way off. You ever do that kind of thing? Well, what's the best distance? Here. You, you just gotta kinda do this stuff. Get it behind there. Get it up on there. What do we want? What half it? We want the same amount? We want to extend it a little bit? I think I'd want to extend it a little bit. Make it a little more fancier. Like maybe somewhere like right in here. Not quite half of it. I keep dropping the camera. Sorry about that. And then I really did almost drop it into here. Okay, break time for me. We're going to decide what, what we're going to make. I don't think I'm going to make another bit tool. Make another back saw? <laughs> Duplicates of tools. We're running out of ideas. What should we make out of this? I do not need another screwdriver. Okay, we cut this with the small tool. We kept drawing. We, we had tape on there. First we marked the line. With, we wrapped some paper around it. And then we put our tape on it. Put a sharpening marker line. Started with the tape once we got a little groove made. And this took a long time going around there. But see how I leave pieces where I don't cut? There was one. Then there was another one. Leave, leave like, don't, don't chop through it all, all of a sudden. See, now I'm down to where there was still one holding it. That way it doesn't jam up. You jam your cutter blade. This is about seven eighths of an inch because I want to cut just on one side. See, just on one side of that dent. And it's metal. That's not real brass. It's probably going to get polished out. Let's see if I can do this on camera. There we go. We'll take our surface plate, which is our table or any good flat surface, glass or metal. And we'll take just some sandpaper and get rid of this. And you'd be amazed how straight you can make that. If one side's high, kind of lean in and scrub it off first. See, we make two different barrels out of this. There we go. If anything, today we're making a barrel to fit this handle, even though we don't know what to do with it. Let's put that on there and we'll see what it looks like. There, we had to do some sanding and wobbling on her to get it on her. So it's going to take a little bit to get it off there, but... Boy, ain't that nice. You know, if we don't mess with that, that brass will stay on there. It means we have to lightly polish that. Like I said, that is really steel. Isn't it nice to have a towel down? This is just a regular four folded napkin. We've already had dirt on it once before from cutting. But it just collects the stuff good. We've already got dirt inside of here. We'll show you this. Where we was cutting something earlier. And we'll shake this off in our waste basket and then reuse it. So the table stays pretty clean. And we're doing trying to do it in a way where the dust comes out and hits right here, what little granny we do, so we don't have to wear a mask or get this place all dusty. So I'm not sure everybody what it looks like. Might be some new person here that ain't been here before. Okay, we're going to take a break. 
Okay, take two. So we're trying to sand this bad spot out. I do not know what drill bit that is, but I think it's in here a long way, though. And I kind of rest my finger down here like this, you know, so it doesn't shake all over. Sanding it, the stuff will fall right on there. I don't know if I said that before. I cut myself. It just stopped recording. I looked. No one's, I'm not recording. I'm talking to myself. I got a real faint line there. Let's get that out of there. That bad spot. That's what we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to say. Here we go. We'll be back. Well, what do you think? We put some flints on there. We even flints this. We picked off some of the house paint. It's got even. We did take a lathe bit and put a little bit of a line there to sandpaper up too. We jumped over, made a few mistakes. If you see some faint lines where we hit the varnish, nobody's perfect. This was a lot whiter wood. I think you seen it earlier when I started sanding it. I might have took a short clip. But you have to preserve it, so. Let's take it down off here. It's dry. You have to preserve it. It's just cheap. I mean, this 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 is as light as a feather. This does not weigh anything. It's hollowed out. There, there's no weight to this at all. I don't know what to make out of it. We made us a new ferrule. It doesn't matter if that has a big hole. Most people look at stuff and they're, they're seeing it like this. Uh, this thing is how long? We always do that. The handle itself is about, what, four and a quarter? The whole, the whole thing is about five and a quarter. Because this is about seven eighths of an inch that barrel is. So, we'll be back. I don't know where we're going to finish the video with, but. I don't think we're going to get this finished. We have not decided what to make out of this. This may be a surprise. I really don't need any more tools, but I do not need a screwdriver. That is a nice tool, though. Handle. Okay, let's take a break, and we'll be back tomorrow. Because our day is done, and we'll think of something else to add to the end of this video. Stay tuned for the conclusion of Customized Handle. That way when you see this in a video, those of you watch sitting in the shop, you, you'll be able to say, hey, I watched him build this. See, that's the whole idea. So, Thanks for watching so far, and we are out of here for now. To, to you, it'll just be one second. To me, it'll be the next day. So, we're gone. Okay, it's the next day. We want to get it. Actually, not to lie, it is Friday. I took yesterday off, and I made chocolate chip cookies, stayed inside. It was all sleeting, freezing rain, and ice coming down. So we're done with this for now. I don't know what we're going to make out of it. We're going to fix this. It's bent, and we're not going to take a big grinder. We're not taking all this off. We're going to try to grind this where it's mushroomed over to get rid of the cracks. And make a head on it so it looks like the head of a nail. And I'm thinking about painting this. Do any of you remember that rust removal I did on the stove with the vinegar and that punch that looked like a bent, growing, crooked carrot? I mean, that thing was bent all over. It was a Dasco, I think. And when it was really rust, I painted it blue. It just polished in. I'm going to paint this in here where it's knurled or checkered. So we're going to have the ends polished. So let's get to work on this and that'll end our video for the week. Uh, there's the name on it. I'll take a picture of it and if we can read it. Right now we'll look at it. Let's, let's try it. Does that say maybe? 
may be. We're going to find out. Don't hiccup. It's patented whatever and it says made in USA. Yeah, we want to leave some of that. I like that look where it looks like a nail. People don't use stuff like this. I've lectured it. A piece is flying off and I'm sure I was told my little brother has a piece of metal in his leg for life from pounding on the big chisel and they just didn't want to operate to get it out. A little piece. This has got the power of a 22 shell rifle or a 22 caliber pellet rifle if that piece flies off there. So it will go under your skin more than just poke you. It will actually embed itself in your leg or your arm or somewhere. So don't use stuff like this. When that stuff gets heavy, grind it off. And that's what they make grinders for. Any kind of grinder. There's your lecture. Now pay attention. <laughs> if it ain't fun, I don't want to do it. Let's get to work. Okay, we used our map gas. Pencil tip. We didn't use the big one with the hose. And we had to overhang this plate off the edge of the table. Because we had it in the vice grip so we could turn it. So we had a vice grip out here. Because it got hot clear down here. But it's straight enough for a punch. But it is still hot down here. Uh, you watch the good. And when you heat stuff like this, say say it's bent right there, right? It's bent. Don't don't just heat it right. You go up and down the whole thing. Trust me. I went up and down the whole thing. And you could slightly see some red coloring. I knew it was hot enough that this hammer was good enough. So I ain't worried about taking the tip or whatever out. Say you was punching on something, I'd rather have the punch bend a little bit than fracture, so that is hot, I ain't kidding you. And this plate is cold. It's been out here, you know, laying out here, because like the, right now the table's cold. So, it'll cool down. Next, we're gonna grind this off just with our various little Dremel tools. It won't take long, so. There, just a tip on that. Uh, this is like a $12 tip. I'm gonna need to set my watch. It is new. This is mag torch or something. I got a video on it. I went through like six of them in the box, so I got a real good one. And some of the valves wouldn't turn easier, and the valve was bent. So I spent the time in the store, and the salesman kept watching me. He'd stop, and then he'd come back a minute later, and, and I'm opening every box. I just looked at him. He just... Maybe he figured that's what I was doing. No, I'm taking them out and shoplifting them all in front of you. No, I did it. I went through six of them before I found the one that I wanted. And real happy with it, though. It's a nice pencil tip. Maybe I'll fi I fired it up before. Maybe I'll... Here, let me fire it up for it and show it to you. Here we go. We'll get it over here. That is a nice pencil tip. You can go way down like this. If you're working, be careful. Don't have a torch sitting there not attending you knock it over. That's extreme. See, we turn out, don't be doing that. Give me wasting fuel. Map gas ain't cheap. You're not looking at the big flame, you're looking at the little flame. Watch. You don't waste fuel. There, that's about it. You go with that center one pencil tip. Very nice for heating small pieces. There, back to work. Okay, we are done with this. This is what I can read. M A Y H E W May Hugh P A T Patent. 7-2-3-18 Made in USA. Is it 1918 or 2018? What do you think? How old does it look to you? We just cleaned up. We took our Sharpie marker, if I can find it. There are these real fine... 
sharpened it. It went down the grooves. Because we don't want to do too much because you'll wear the tip off of these. I'm trying to get it wet to go on them. See, see, where, it, see where it does get wet. But be careful. You'll wear the tip off of this. These are great when you're drawing patterns. Once you get it done in pencil, on some of my chicken scratches, you outline it with this. So you ignore all the mistakes you made with a pencil and you just go by whatever line this is made. You know what I mean. Because you're going to have pencil marks all over and you make patterns and stuff. When you're finally done, redraw it. I tried taking some pictures of that, but we don't know if we're ever going to make this into a sharp pointed punch, center punch, or it's probably what I call that, what, an eight inch diameter? I don't think it's a 3 16. We can measure it. Sure we can. You can do this. Here, always start off with a number. Well, I was going to say it. We're 30 seconds over, so do we do the math here? Is that 5 30 seconds? Eighth of an inch is... Four thirty seconds was five five thirty seconds. So I knew it wasn't three sixteenths. You get good at this after a while. I mean you've done it enough and stuff that we're looking at welding rods and stuff that we can all tell it was more than an eighth of an inch but under Close enough right. So it was a lot smaller before I cut it off. Uh, it was way down there. It, it was probably maybe a little bit smaller than it. It could have had a point on it. But I like that just like that. It's going to get dirt greaser. I, I thought about painting it, but that just has a nice look to it. There are some cracks in here. See? But we wanted to keep that as big as we could. So... We can all handle that, right? See how it's kind of domed when your hammer hits it? We, we would really have a little edge here, like a nail, instead of getting rid of all that. Because I like to look at that when you look at it. It just looks like, you know, it looks like a nail set punch, but a giant one. <laughs> so I'm thinking it really is 1918 with this old school. If you call that neuralizing, neuraling, checkering, checkering is on a gun stock. When they draw the diagonal lines in the wood, then they go each way in little miniature diamonds. Okay, that's it. We're done for this week. Uh, we're on here. This is way too long a video, so uh, thanks for watching. Uh, someday we're going to post it. We we lost a Sunday in the Shop video and then we found it and lost it again. I was just doing a screwdriver. So maybe we'll find it again. But uh, There. Another one I did and I stained it. Maybe we'll find it again and post it. If not, you can see another nice screwdriver. It's kind of bad. It doesn't go in the wood real straight. But I did a really good job staining it, I thought, for what it was. So, right here, we are gone. See you next week.